Hey everybody, it's your boy Sir Dragon, and welcome back to another edition of the Heavens Monsters Podcast. With me always is Terrence, aka Timmy Money. If you smell what the lion is cooking, we are going to do Labor Day's Monday Night Raw and the following day of SmackDown Live from uh se- yeah, September September second and September third. I had I had to correct myself because I'm about to say August. Ah, we're done with August in 2019. The show starts with Monday Night Raw with the contract signing between Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins with Michael Cole on standby. It would then be ultimately interrupted by the OCs, led by AJ Styles, saying that why does Braun Strowman get a title shot? Because he looked at it. Then he makes a joke about his ta- uh, part, uh, members of the OC. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallo saying, that, well, maybe somebody's going to defend, the, get my title just by looking at him. Anybody, the next person that looks at my title gets a title shot. And he says, don't look at my title. Don't look at my title. I'm not looking at my title. I'm not looking at the title. In which case, it gets into a heated battle, especially poor Michael Cole. He gets told to be shut up by AJ Styles. We then have a tag team match between... The OCs of Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows versus Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins. And they successfully defeat them. The OCs get beaten. To be correct. If I'm correct. Yeah. After which, they ended up getting assaulted. I'm trying to see here. It, show, it should show. If it wasn't at the end of the show. I think it was at the beginning of the show. <laughs> My Pokeballs are getting the Pokestops. Yep. They didn't show the... They don't talk about this part, but I remember. After which, we would have all three members of OC jump... Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman. And not only them, but their comp- opponents for the tag team Raw titles, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. So it would be five men against two men. Ultimately, courtesy of this incident and how chaotic it would be, there would be news told by Michael Cole, which he received, saying that next week on Monday Night Raw, the contract signing will be held once again, but this time under the law of Stone Cold Steve Austin. In which case, Braun Strowman, rightfully so, is speculating that him and Seth Rollins got a deal. That Seth Rollins was talked very and praised by Stone Cold Steve Austin After he beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So now, Braun Strowman feels like everyone is against him. Secretly trying to uh, make Seth Rollins the monster slayer. In which case, even Seth Rollins says, I don't have to do any of that. If I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you fair and square. And when I do, I'll be not just Seth Rollins the beast slayer. I'll be Seth Rollins the monster slayer. Or if I'm correct, he says... Even if that means I have to slay a monster. Yeah, I think that's what he said. After which, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode would have their own match against the a former Raw Tag Team Champions, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, who, respectfully, if I can, I've noticed, have been getting uh, airtime. This is all thanks to, as a reminder, to the fact that Shane O'Mac is no longer wrestling or putting himself in camera view. He has not done that for the last two or three weeks. Yeah, because like people get tired that they want. And now the one who's in charge of uh, the lead writer is Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. In addition to this information, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode defeat Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. They're on a losing streak, sadly to say. Mm-hmm. Those two. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they always been. Next, we have a, uh, shoot, another person who's been on a losing streak. 
courtesy of her match with Bailey last week, and I think Becky Lynch too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lacey Evans would then have a shot against Natalia. Ultimately, Natalia loses that match thanks to one hell of a knockout punch by Lacey Evans' woman's right knockout punch at that. Not looking good mm-hmm. for Natalia. She called herself the Queen of Hearts. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she took the, because her uncle, Owen, wasn't the original King of Hearts. Next, we have a promo. Well, not really a promo. More like Showtime, airtime of uh, Becky Lynch in the ring with her title. In which case... It's more like a segment that she's doing. Mm-hmm. In which case, she's out there stating all the uh, things that she and Sasha Banks have gone through. And that she knows that her... and uh, th- Between the two of them, is going to be inevitable. That the fight that they're going to be, that she's looking forward to whooping her ass. And she's already hyped knowing that Becky, uh, Sasha Banks music is playing. She's like, okay, here we go. Let's go. Right now. Sasha Banks, while on the ramp, actually says that she challenges the Raw, Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, to a title shot at Clash of Champions. And no, it's not Night of Champions. We screwed that up. I screwed it. It's Clash, not Night of Champions, Clash of Champions. I thought it was Night of Champions. So see, they, they're using, they use, they call it Clash of Champions because they're using WCW pay-per-view. Mm. Yep. They would have, uh, have a match later on that night in a tag team match. We'll get to that in just a bit. In the meantime, we have the King of the Ring quarterfinals match between Barry Corbin and Cedric Alexander. Cedric, Adred, uh, Cedric Alexander gives one hell of a fight, but sadly, because of a knee injury, couldn't put Baron Corbin down. Thus, Baron Corbin got the win and has moves on into the tournament. Cedric so, uh, Alexander was trying to use speed against Baron Corbin, but apparently that didn't work. Yeah, because he had a knee injury along with yeah. that. Yeah, thanks to his fight previously with uh, Cesaro. Yeah, I was saying that, that reason why that didn't work because of his knee injury. Mm-hmm. He tried to uh, see if he can do it with the knee injury, but that didn't oh, work. Oh, no, 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 no. Never mind. I thought it was Cesaro. I forgot. I'm thinking in my head. That wasn't it. Cedric Alexander got jumped by the OC after their little skirmish with Cesar- uh, Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins. I'm forgetting. Yeah. They did attack somebody in the back. I forgot who. It was Cedric Alexander. Yeah. And they were questioning would he be able to compete. He was able, but courtesy of the knee injury, they made sure that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So that means, ooh, I just thought of something. Because of him costing the quarterfinals in the uh, King of the Ring tournament, someone in the form of, uh, I'm just guessing. Because every title is going to be defended and... Oh, oh, no, no, no. That's right. Ricochet has a title shot for AJ Styles. That's right. I was thinking that they might put Cedric Alexander against him, but he uh, I forgot about Ricochet. They haven't been talking about that. They haven't been talking about Ricochet. So Ricochet versus AJ Styles is at Clash of Champions. I was thinking it might, there might be an opportunity for Cedric, but nope. I totally forgot about Ricochet. They haven't been talking about it. Wait, don't. Don't Baron Corbin got a match with uh, Ricochet and uh, Samoa Joe? No, no, he's still in the court, uh, the Rick King in the Ring tournament. But uh, no, nobody won. That's why they they changed it though. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that in just a second, my brother. Okay. I'm gonna see it. Okay. The Viking Raiders then fight once again. Not even from that city this time. Just local talents. Not even from that city. They ended up beating them so e- damn easily. I know for a fact these guys, the Viking Raiders, are looking for some competition. Yeah. They're just not getting it. Yeah, because like, they don't think they're ready for a competition yeah. yet. That's, yeah. that's how they up is. They want to put they don't get some, uh, nobodies because they don't think they're ready for. Uh, oh wait, no! Whoa. Damn, he's okay. This is interesting. I remember Ricochet does earn a title shot at Class of Champions. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe they'll put Cedric Alexander against uh, Ricochet. We gotta look this up. But 
But here's the thing. Ricochet, I was seeing what you meant. Ricochet had a match with Samoa Joe that ended in a double pinfall. After a top rope fallout, they would actually, the referee looked, he was on both angles. He had a good view on both arms covering both opponents. So it would be a double pinfall. Ultimately, Baron Corbin in the back is already saying what should be done, saying that he should get a pass to the finals, the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Instead, the referee he Baron Corbin has been having trouble with, I forget his name, actually stated that he got this information from the higher-ups, saying that instead of being eliminated, both competitors will qualify and fight Baron Corbin in a triple threat match for the semifinals on Raw side. So that will be on Monday Night Raw, a triple threat match between Ricochet, Samoa Joe, and Baron Corbin for the King of the Ring title of tournament. I have to, if I had to choose out of them, title is a tournament. If I had to choose out of them, I have to go with Samoa Joe. I'm hoping Ricochet gets it. I mean, Samoa Joe, I agree. Mm-hmm. So we're both in agreement Baron Corbin should lose. Mm-hmm. Should, but there. will he? That's the question. Let's, let's, let's pray. Mm. <laughs> Next, we have a interesting segment from the F- Firefly Funhouse, the return of Bray Wyatt. And he, damn, you want to talk about cult? He actually had a uh, devil sh- Vince McMahon show up again, the puppet. And he's going to say, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm making money. He's like, what? And you got the puppet going, <laughs> Eating that dollar, a uh, hundred dollar bills and putting it down his throat and he just throws that money in the back of him like it's nothing. Cause he didn't care about money. And he said, uh, to everybody, join us. Jo- uh, 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 see you in hell. And then you hear the music ear and he gets from smiley to let me in. And a silhouette of the fiend's face covers his. They're like, oh boy. But he said he, he oh, he, at, mm, go ahead. He said he wanted to fight somebody in that pay per view. Mm-hmm. It would actually be notified. I got this info on Instagram. Instagram, thanks to WWE. And the question is asked: Who should the fiend Bray Wyatt fight at Hell in a Cell? Should it be Braun Strowman? Or Seth Rollins. Well, I, I I got that answer. Let me go. I, it's on. No, 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 no. First, we'll we'll get we'll come back to that in just a I, second. Oh, I, I'm not gonna get it right now. I'm gonna hold it for. I'm not, I'm not gonna get it right now. I'm gonna wait till later. Okay. So with that said, yeah, that was last one. Next, we have a match between The Miz and Cesaro. Ultimately, The Miz won the match. We have a promo with Rey Mysterio and how he's going to continue wrestling. There you go. I got this now. Wait, let me just double check to make sure. Yeah, there was no winner. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was. Okay. So we would have a match between the two Raw and SmackDown champions, uh, women champions of Becky Lynch and Bayley taking on the tag team women's champions, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. And during that match, Sasha Banks would make an appearance, not interfering until much later, attacking Becky Lynch. Ultimately, the match by disqualification goes to Becky Lynch and Bayley. During that match, I mean, during that time at, at the end of the show, after that confrontation, we would see Sasha Banks holding a chair and only to be yanked out of Bailey's hand. Ultimately, fans and audiences were looking at Bailey, questioning what was she going to do? Was she going to stand or fight her best friend, Sasha Banks? And we got our answer just by the way she was holding that chair and looking at Sasha Banks and Becky. Ladies and gentlemen, Bailey stands by her best friend and ultimately attacks Becky Lynch. Damn. Everybody's speculating that she is turning heel, but we'll cover that when we talk about SmackDown. She does answer questions as to how 
she resorts to that. In which case, also, this would be put into motion because I got information thanks to Google News. Next Monday Night Raw, we would have all four horse women from NXT, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, Charlotte Flair, and Bayley in a tag team match between Sasha Banks and Bayley against Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair? We'll cover out why that is becoming a thing in just a minute. You got that info you were looking for? Yeah, they said the pay per view where they're gonna fight at. The hell in a cell. Mm-hmm. I said that. Okay. Who should he fight at Hell in a Cell? So after Clash of Champions, it's going to be Hell in a Cell. So while he's looking up September 3rd of SmackDown, a shout out to our boys Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, and Andre Mitchell. A link to their three YouTube channels will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And another remaining shout out to Renee, Farrell, Chris Petrie, and Delvin. If I remember, yeah, I think I know what started the show. You can look it up still. The show would, oh, I'm trying to think, was there anything else? No, no, no. Nothing involving that. The 24-7 title on Monday Night Raw, it, it was on SmackDown. I don't know why, but okay. They trying to fasten the new <laughs> next. At the beginning of SmackDown, I remember this because an- answers were needed by Bailey on her assault ending Monday Night Raw, standing by her s- dear f- friend Sasha Banks. She would state that it was through loyalty that she was trying to teach the women's and children of today that she's still the hugger. But she is showing where loyalty looks like. She sticks to her friends and is being pushed into question. Now, also, and he he put this to me, and I was like agreeing with him. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Because courtesy of this, this happened with Daniel Bryan and The Miz. When Daniel Bryan turned heel in his Save the Planet gimmick, The Miz with his TV show and showing love for his family and his newborn baby daughter making all sorts of goofy things on his Instagram and Twitter was forced to be turned into a baby face. A good guy. So now that Bailey's being put into question whether she's still the hugger or the heel, Sasha, uh, Charlotte Flair might have be in the role for turning baby face? Mm Mm-hmm. That's what they gonna, that's what they they gonna do since uh, ba- uh Bailey is a he- heel they gonna uh have ch- they gonna change Charlotte as a babyface. Ultimately, with Charlotte, she comes to answer certain questions, that, courtesy of the fact that she is in a title shot at Clash of Champions with Bailey at the SmackDown Women's Title. In which case, now we're kind of speculating because Charlotte ba- uh, Charlotte Flair. Like I'm getting between Charlotte and Sasha. Bleh. Charlotte Flair actually stated that which if with her you see you see what you get you get what you see is what I meant to say, and that if she does not care who she steps on to get that title to stay at the top, and she will stomp on anybody. Don't you mean what you see is what you get? That's why I said you said what, what you, you I know I said it wrong at first and then I corrected myself yeah. at the end. What you see is what you get. That's right. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say, and I said it wrong. Blah. In which case, Charlotte, I mean, Sasha Banks, about to say Charlotte now. <laughs> Sasha Banks makes an appearance, and they both attack Charlotte Flair. In which case, Charlotte knew what was coming. She elbow shots Bailey, but Charlotte gets jumped either which way by the brutality. And I like how they put it here. Brutally attacked. I say brutality of Bailey and Sasha Banks. Now, with that in mind, since Charlotte Flair, I mean, here we go again. Sasha Banks is on Monday Night Raw and Bailey's on SmackDown. Will the two friends become double champions? Because now this might be a opportunity for those two to get one hell of a push. Because Charlotte Flair is fighting Bailey 
for the SmackDown's title. If she loses, uh, uh, doesn't get it, Bailey still stays champion. In which case, on the other end, Becky is defending her title against Sasha Banks. So if Bailey loses her title, then it will be also ba- uh, Sasha Banks, who's the Raw Women's Champion. And this is really torn between us because now with the dra- draft coming after SmackDown moves to Sp- Fox, uh, Fox Sports, mm-hmm. will these two women as uh, potentially, potentially, I'm not calling it. I'm actually booting for Becky Lynch and I don't want Charlotte Flair. As much as the fact that I'm questioning Bailey, I don't, I, I don't want Charlotte Flair. Cause he's, I don't had, want Charlotte Flair unless she's defending that title for everybody. Well, I know some people get tired of her. Uh, I know. Get sick of tired. Yeah. Cause like, I know, we know, I know that. Ten she, time. Ten time. Really? She's trying to make it like, seem like she's going to be like the first female to help to do the same thing as her father is. So mm-hmm. like, make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause she already beat two time, beat, uh, she matched and beat two times Trish Stratus, and then she beat her! Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she tied her record. Charlotte Flair beat Trish Stratus. I have to rub that in. I will make a danger turn. We'll see. In which case, that's what I'm stating. If these two get one hell of a push, we could see them both wear, uh, wearing blue and red titles and this WWE Tag team women titles. They could be two time for the first time. They can not only be the first, but the first to be two time. If they allows exactly. That's what I'm saying. If they get that heck of a push, but hopefully, I'm hoping that Becky Lynch retains her title. And honestly, considering the two, I'm I'm actually just hoping Bailey keeps her title because at least she does give everybody a chance. I don't care what everybody says that she's not. She did that too to Becky Lynch on Monday Night Raw because there was being interviews over and over and over talking about her best friend and talking about Becky Lynch and how she's the face of the women's division and that she's not. She's not, she's being overshadowed by everybody else. It's like, damn. Talk about, and we got those photos right here. SmackDown and then Raw. Bailey is going to town with the chair. Yeah, we get, we're not focused. There we go. Put this back in. Hello, where are you? There you are. Next, we have. Uh, man, this guy's just getting a pass. But he did win this match fair and square. It would be the quarterfinal match. On SmackDown Live for Elias versus Ali. Sadly, Elias wins. Ali does not move on. So, we're going to have him as a... uh -uh, I hope not. Between him, Barry Corbin and him? I hope not. Next. Ooh. You might be interested in this. You and Xavier. Mm -hmm. We would have the tag team of... Sonya Deville and uh, he wants me to say it like this. Andy. Also known as Fire Desire fight off against the tag team women champions Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross on SmackDown Live. In which case Fire and Desire get the win and the actual idea of a push that they will be the ones to fight against this, uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross for the women's tag team titles at Clash of Champions. My two girls fight each other. There you go. Makes me sad. <laughs> My two girls. Which blonde will win and which brunette alongside them will win? <laughs> it is it, the blonde and brunettes. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> this is going to be good. Next, we have Orton and the Revival lay waste to Kofi Kingston. Orton taunts Kofi Kingston and his plans on what he's going to do to Kofi Kingston. Well, you can you can't call Kofi Kingston a, a coward, but he falls to Randy Orton's trap because right behind him is the revival jumping him, and they lay another super RKO, three man RKO with that, on poor Kofi Kingston, and he has no help from Biggie or Xavier Woods, courtesy of the injuries done to them by Randy Orton and the revival. That's like uh, the revival guy mentor. Mm-hmm. And, and think about this, Legacy 2.0. Yep. Version 2. 
No, Legacy would be uh, uh, second or third generation superstars. Revival are first generations. Yeah. I was so making, that I, I, I was making a joke. I know you were making a joke. I'm just, you know. Okay, so next we would have... Um, oh, this is interesting. With everything... Going for Elias on SmackDown side, there's somebody else who has been told that he ain't going to make it, that he's got so many damn sh short jokes coming his way. And yet still, even by Zelina, not Selena, Zelina Vega, I have to say that because you will point that out to me. Ultimately, it would be her that says that coming from a short stack uh, superstar to another that she admires him, but too bad Andrea is in the tournament. Well, too bad, because Chad Gable is still moving on from the quarterfinals to the semifinals after being Andrea, and everybody is losing their damn mind. If y'all <laughs> see, if y'all know her, she's also, Selena Vega is also in a movie, Fighting With My Family, starring Paige. Mm -hmm. She plays AJ Lee. And she's also a teen, former TNA knockout, Rosita. Oh, we got to see this after we're done. I got to see what they said with Andrea. Mm -hmm. Next, we would have Alexter Black state that if nobody, if the mountain is not coming to him, he is coming to the mountain. Basically, it's using a challenge for him to come to him Nobody, so he comes out to the ring issuing a open challenge. The one who comes to that is the veteran, Shelton Benjamin. And sadly for Shelton Benjamin, his losing streak still continues with fade to black. All right, uh, Shelton, you want your, your, your uh, buddy MVP knows how you feel. He had one before. Oh, and... Also, on that note, we were talking about this. We were kind of disappointed that Selton Benjamin doesn't have his iconic music, Ain't No Stopping Me. No! We want that back. He wants it too. We want that back. Because he gets that kind of music. That music gets you hot. You know he's ready to win. With the music he's got right now, what was it? Uh, Amer uh, the American Alpha uh, uh, 2. So it's Chad Gable's music, but just... Yeah. Different. Yeah, because yeah, Chad Gable is using the first one. Oh, hold so up, bro. You got eyelash right here. I got it so for the, you. So the is using the second one. Ah, come on. WWE, you could better. It's cure for Connors uh, week, a month, and we got promos for all the new kitties who have conquered multiple times or is in the fight against cancer and all its ugly forms. Good luck on you, kids. Which case, next we have Shinsuke Nakamura, Intercontinental Champion, getting ready to fight The Miz for his title at Class of Champions. And right beside him is his commentator, live commentator on the mic, poor commentators on the table, ultimately against freaking uh, poor sap local talent and his being called the Miz just to psych him up and he gets King Shasha. In the back, we would have, before this match, we would have, I don't know why they have not consummated their marriage yet. They had all this time, all these weeks that they could have done it in a hotel. What, they had to do it at a resort? Nah. The only way he'll do it is do uh, that. Drake Maverick and his wife, Renee, uh, uh Renee Maverick. I will, on what he'll, they can do that is if he went, he has a belt. He has a belt! No, he, he, he doesn't have it now, does he? No, he had to beat all of the belt all last week. He didn't consummate his marriage. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You stupid. So he's running around backstage with his wife and he gets jumped and out of nowhere, he gets pinned by one of the, one half of the B team, Bo Dallas. The new, first time ever 24-7 champion. Mm -hmm. Then, while they're running around all over the arena, he is being jumped by Lucha House Party and the Singh Brothers from 205 Live. Yeah. And 
Drake Maverick becomes a five-time 24-7 champion after getting his title back and posing as a lamp the whole time next to the King of the, King of the Ring throne area? I did not notice him, did you? It's our truth, ladies and gentlemen, and he got his baby back 14 times. 24-7 champion. He's oh. almost there to Ric Flair's record. That means he needs to lose it and gain it back two, two more times to match it or surpass it. So the so he got it now? Yeah, our truth got it now. Oh, okay. Well, Drake Mallory, you need a bodyguard. Hmm? And that's if the bodyguard doesn't want the title. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Because last but not least, we would have Daniel Bryan demanding, demanding Roman Reigns to give him an apology for showing that he had no association with Eric Rowan's actions on insulting him. Roman Reigns does not care, and he knows that he's going to have a match with Eric Rowan at Class of Champions, but still, issues are being flown at Daniel Bryan. But sadly, this is what happens. Eric Rowan comes up from behind Roman Reigns, does all of these kind of punishments, hitting him with the steel steps, and this is what happens. In the ring, before he hits him with the steel chairs, Eric Rowan is stating. Hello. Okay, we're back. Um, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Eric Rowan would actually be in the ring before he hits Roman Reigns with the steel steps, saying that no one ordered him to do anything. He did it on his own accord and that no one will ever slap him again. When he did hit Ro Roman Reigns with the steel chairs and he was getting ready to slam Roman Reigns' face into the uh, the commentator table, Daniel Bryan would be in his way saying, What are you doing? Get out of my way. This has nothing to do with you. He smacks him and he goes and takes Daniel Bryan and showing no more allegiance even though Daniel Bryan is saying that he's his friend, he's I'm his um, I'm your friend, and uh, nope, that don't mean shit. He throws him to the table. He stands tall above everybody else, saying he's not going never again, never again. I actually thought he might be actually going back to Bray Wyatt. Nope, he's standing alone. He ain't nobody's bossing him. So now it would be actually proven that Eric Rowan would have. I didn't check this out. I thought I forgot to do this. Have his own signature music. I thought it was. He doesn't have that banjo music that he had before. Instead, he has these weird music that I think might be the same music him and Luke Harper had when they were the Bludgeon Brothers. So he's got his own music once again, no longer associated with Daniel Bryan. In which case, ladies and gentlemen, That'll be the end of our video. His ride's about to come. We gotta see if we can quickly do a 205 live and an NXT. Uh, oh. If we can't, then I'll do it by myself. I got my phone. I'll see what I can do. In which case, ladies and gentlemen, you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button if you like the content and hit that notification bell right here for the next Evans Monsters podcast. I'm Serge Dragon. This is Team Money. See you next time.